So what if this swell went through that and I round to the other side over there to that? What would that, how would that? You could have me doing well, the Walter Houston dance. That's what you'd have. Well, I because want, I'm going to do it. I want to see this thing. <laughs> Hey y'all, Billy from Perman Pastures Farm, and y'all know who this guy is, and if you don't, you need to go back and watch all the stuff he did. This is Justin from Metcalf Mills. The man's got more tricks than a cat in a hat, and he does more things. I know he's going to say his hat's getting tight again, <laughs> but you name it all, I mean, this guy can do it. Everything from a lightning bolt to a lightning bug, he knows how to do it here in these mountains. <laughs> well, check this out, y'all. This is what we've been kind of holding back on or at least telling you about, Justin's super busy. And for him to be able to come over here and help do this, it's a it's a tremendous um, burden on him to be able to do this. So Justin, why don't you tell him what we're doing? Well, we're uh, grading out the spot for the greenhouse. And what we've done so far is we laid out a line, as you saw earlier, Kind of a gauge to go by to make somewhat of a straight cut here to have a baseline to go off of. We took all the topsoil off and piled it down at the very bottom. So all the digging we do and everything under the topsoil that's just what I call just plain old dirt is gonna get moved around and put where it needs to go. And then at the end, we'll have all that topsoil to put back on some areas so that it'll have a better chance of stabilizing and getting some new growth of whatever kind of perm they put on this thing. Big perm, big worm, <laughs> big all of it, yeah. So working in this mountain terrain is your speciality. Um, it's it's something we wouldn't in a million, well, we could try to come out here and tackle this, but honestly, you got years and years of experience. So folks, this is where your partnerships can be of real value to you. There's things where we're a blessing to him and there's bigger things that he's a blessing to Big us. Big time blessing. Big yeah. Time. So, I mean, not the least of which being that creme brulee, which he just, it's like Scooby Snacks to him, y'all. Michelle's up there making some right now. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> yeah. so, You're going to hear me hollering later. <laughs> <laughs> so in this, in this terrain, because nothing, I don't know if they can tell it on camera. In this terrain, nothing's flat. So what are you going to do? You're going to make us a flat spot so where we can put up, which by the way, y'all, this high tunnel here, all the parts and pieces where you may have seen it in some videos, guess who it came from? Him. So, I mean, and it's not something that we alone are just going to use. We're going to collaborate on this, all working together. So it's technically over here on his, on our property, but it's a collective. I'm not a big fan of collective use of a lot of things, but, and I'm typically when I get into partnerships with folks, usually it's on a limited basis. Yeah. And this is one case where that's a big exception because not only are we neighbors, we're friends, we're joined in the hip on a lot of things here. And this is one of them, y'all, where we have the land where he's got plenty of land himself, but it just makes more sense to put it here. The way it's situated. Good spot. Yeah, real yeah. good spot. Gets good sun all day. Yeah. So, I mean, is there anything, what other... What other things should we be looking out here, Justin? I mean, you're going to basically flatten this out. Yeah, we'll, What's it going to look like? Yeah, we'll flatten it out and just try to tailor it to the landscape as best we can. A lot of times when people get grading work done, the grader really don't care. He just wants to get his work done and get gone. And a lot of times you see just a big old cut. And I never did like to do things that way. I started doing grading about 15 years ago. And... Uh, I always like to try to work with the natural flow of the land as best I could. And that's what we're gonna try to do. There was a little bit of a, a somewhat slightly sloping shelf here. And so we're just gonna alter that to make it flat enough to put this greenhouse on and then try to tailor everything back in until it looks nice and smooth as it does most of the time in nature. Now so. folks, this was where we were originally gonna put the earth ship until this wise man told us it's a bad idea and picked a 10 times better spot for it. And so this greenhouse, it makes sense. I mean, this is where folks, this is where your your foolish pride can get you killed or get you hurt or make 10 times more work for you. Instead of going with what I thought should be done, you go to the experts. And this is where you want to employ the help of these people that know more. He's got a lifetime of doing this, folks. I don't. 
there's other areas where I'm, I'm an expert, but this ain't it. So wherever he says, he's like asking us this and that, but at the end of the day, we're saying whatever you think. Um, and that's exactly where it comes down to. So Justin, I know we got a lot planned for this area. I guess we don't want to reveal it all right now because there's things that's going to happen on the top side, things that's going to happen here, but this is the lion's share of it. So give them, give them kind of a, a rundown of all the things you do and honestly, all the things that you're going to show us how to do okay. here in the near future. All right, I'll try to run through that as accurately as I can. Uh, if you don't know me, I've got two daughters, and I take care of them. My dad is uh, pretty sick. I take care of him pretty much full time. I do a lot of uh, farming in the season. I grow a lot of different things and try to uh, include as much of that, that as I can in my content. But my main thing is grain mills and milling. I dress millstones, do all kind of restoration work. I built a water mill from the ground up. Always working on mill projects. Got plenty to do, running all over the country. Now I got two more fellas here that's uh, hopefully going to be doing a little running with me in the near future. That's and I'm right. Really happy about that. Uh, but yeah, always doing something interesting, and it's a blessing to be able to share it with you. And you'll hear me say a lot, I, you don't have the best neighbors in the world because I do. Right here they are. <laughs> So. Boy, that goes double for us. I, I asked the good Lord to put the the people, to take certain people out of my life. I mean, not to kill them, right. but to basically, there's, put it this way, folks, just because the family don't make them good for you. So, or just because they've been longtime friends don't necessarily make them good for you. So I asked the good Lord more than once, and my prayers have been answered more ways than I can tell, to put the best people in my life. And boy, that has been happening in more ways than I know how to describe and um this is one of them right here folks i mean i'm 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 blessed beyond words and folks if those of you out there i know there's a lot of folks out there that say hey i can't do this by myself um i'm a, I'm a sole person well guess what he's all by himself by and large he's got two little girls a dad that's infirmed works all kinds of crops comes over here and helps us out helps out numerous other people i don't honestly don't know how he sleeps and does it by himself but i know it's a tough thing for him but lately as of late can't believe it. I need to get Ripley's on speed dial because he actually had William go with him yesterday to go help out on the project. And tomorrow we're supposed to both go with you to go help out getting another thing done. So that's like fusing. I mean, folks, it's not difficult, but it's like fusing DNA for a guy like this who's accustomed to doing everything by himself. And I guess he, do you feel like me by and large that you don't, you, you're reluctant to ask for help? because yeah. you don't want to put nobody out yeah i've always been that way just hard to ask for help and it makes it really hard on yourself at times and you and then you're it's actually i finally realized it's kind of selfish because what you're doing you could be sharing with somebody else they could be enjoying this you could be enjoying that time spent with them so i've had to look at myself and you know say don't be so selfish you got a lot of stuff you need to share and now here we go you know i got wonderful people that live right close to me to share with and do things with and help them and it's just like like billy said it's a huge blessing if i'd have put in an order and wrote down exactly what kind of neighbors i wanted i it wouldn't have been close to these folks so and if you watch them you know you know how they are and it's just i can't say enough good things about them it's been a real blessing folks that's the creme brulee talking <laughs> Well, anyway, folks, we're going we're gonna to quit holding them up here, and then we're going to recap when it's all said and done, at least this part of it. But like I said, all these parts and pieces you see down here about to come together for a pretty awesome high tunnel. You're the man, Justin. So are you, brother. So are you. <laughs>
All right, y'all, was that a cool thing or what? All with my man, my friend, my compañero. Because <laughs> every time you're operating a piece of machinery and I'm standing around, you know what everybody's thinking. They're like, oh, okay, he got him a crew over there. He, got, he, he, he came straight across the border. Okay, he got some guys that'll work. All right. Justin, what do we got here? Tell them what you did because there's a whole lot of nuance. Probably going to have to like explain. I'm sure on the camera, they ain't gonna be able to tell. Right. Well, what we've done is we made this cut and where the water is gonna collect is gonna be right in this back against the toe of this slope. And the pad is kind of rounded off and it slopes away from the center so that this hoop house, it stays dry. You don't get any water coming in from outside and pooling up in there. And the water collects back here. It's going to go out this way and spill around over into the holler there without any erosion, hopefully. We're going to let everything settle around the outside edge, let it settle in real good, get a few rains on it, and we'll come back and finish grade everything and get it ready for some vegetation or I don't know what, what the perm's going to be on it, but we'll find out. Well, you said, you say hoop house or poop house? I said hoop, but I guess it could be either one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. It could be all of the above in these times. Right, yeah, exactly right. So where it comes down, so exactly. in a nutshell, you, everything basically sheds from there down here, at least on the top side. Yeah. Comes around the edge. Right. And all of it meets down here. Maybe we ought to come down here and take a look at it. So so it's all basically funneled right here. And right. then we got a little driveway, another little additional driveway. Another end, yeah. I like what you got going here. So it'll come off and hopefully it won't be rushing too much and it'll just kind of ease around instead of shooting it off to where it's going to just be flying. It's just going to kind of ease around and just dissipate out into the grass. Well, from a permaculture perspective, okay, there's going to be a lot of water that captures here and eventually going that way. Yeah. Um, is there any reason William suggested a little bit ago that we couldn't take this water that comes off of here is there any way we could have it dumped into a swale? I don't see why not. And for those of you that don't know, a swale is a, um, a ditch on contour. Basically, it's a level ditch and it's capturing all the water passively. So you already got a passive turn to this already to begin with. So it could possibly, I see you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> what I see with a swale idea, and tell me what you think, I mean, but we could just use the transit and shoot contour all the way around to the cove over there in the holler and just make that swell go all the way around. That's, that's as exactly- As far as y'all wanted it to go. That's I mean, exactly what I'd like to do because we're gonna not only have a lot of water here, we also got water coming off that driveway. Maybe that little, the future project that you're gonna see that more of that mountain wisdom y'all that I just <laughs> love. There's so many things going coming together here. We can't tell it all to you right now, but that's what I'm talking about. So we could capture all this stuff. And this is why you hire pros, y'all, and especially one that has a respect um, for, for, respect for your terrain, you know? Not somebody that's just going to say, hey, I've made the pad, have a nice day. He's thought third and fourth and fifth steps ahead to where, you know, I'm, I'm saying, like William's saying a swale, he's saying, well, not why not run with it? Why not? Let it go forever, and then let's say the swale fills up. What are we talking about down there in the future? Where could it go? Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question. If the swell went around to that uh, that little, it's kind of a swell coming down now, that low spot, right. but it's coming down the grade, down. So what if this swell went through that and around to the other side over there to that, what would that, how would that? You could have me doing yeah. the Walter Houston dance. That's what you'd have. Well, I wanna, I'm gonna do it. I wanna see this dance. Yeah. <laughs> So it'd curl around through the holler and then go all the way back around over towards that tree somewhere. Over that there. would be tie into that. Tie right into the poop house so, that'll be right over there. So right? that would catch all the water coming down and just hold it. I, I would love to. See, I'd be that's able to... what I that's new to me on this on this swell business. I mean, I've done them before, but not in the aspect of what y'all use them for. The only, so it's very interesting to me. I think it's I think it's a fantastic idea. The only thing is, with our terrain, are we over? the allowable that I we see. can do for that. I so see. there's other methods that we can I do. It see. doesn't necessarily have to be a swale, right. but I love how we could even go over there 
Is there any reason that swale couldn't have like something of a bulkhead on it and it dumps not, into a pond? Not a bit. Or if the pond gets full coming down that um, that ri that valley there, then it could overflow through the bulkhead back into the swale. Is there any reason all that couldn't no, happen? Not a bit. Wow. So would that be like putting the swale to the lowest point, the center there of this existing swale that's coming down the mountain? And then having another one coming from over here and have the dump out point they right They could. In they could. I mean, well, it could be that they're level, but when they hit a certain point, they fall over the dam or bulkhead or whatever you want to call it right. into the pond. Or if the pond gets too full, then it dumps out into the swale. So oh, yeah. good night. So we could have a pond there. We talked about one here, and you said the one down the hill by the chickens. It just looks like a pond was meant to be there, right? Right, right. I know what I'm going to be thinking about before I fall to sleep tonight. Yeah, I know, too. It's creme brulee. <laughs> yeah, after that. <laughs> after that. And I've got, I had a thought on this creme brulee. You know, I've heard that all my life. I've eaten a few, very few. Nothing next to what the original homestead honey, Billy Wife, the original homestead honey makes. And I, it just, I don't want to call it creme brulee. It's got to have a special name because it's that good. So what I came up with, creme brulee. Because <laughs> this is my bra right here. <laughs> Y'all have no idea how funny that is. And his daughter, uh, his oldest daughter is going to be laughing too. We'll tell the story, I think. We'll do a live one of these days with Justin there with us. <laughs> You'll find out just how funny that is. And also, also, um, it's a testament to his clever wit and nature. And he's, he's just a, a joy to spend so much time with. And we're going to be doing it tomorrow. We're going to be spending time together tomorrow going to one of his jobs. I want to make sure I make it clear. I don't have the right touch on that. I want to make it clear this is not a female undergarment. How do you do it, Billy? Bra. 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 Yeah, I, I got to get better hey, at that. Bra. You know what I'm saying. Hey, bra. bra. I had this guy the other day, all he said, hey, what you need, bra? And then I told him I wanted some coffee after I was a little bit freaked out. He's like, dynamite. I'm like, what was this guy? He was like a cross between uh, Jeff Piccoli and uh, JJ from Good Times, I couldn't figure out all what's going on, but this is Asheville. So there ain't, I don't know what I'm dealing with. So Justin, I mean, it looks like we got tons of options out here as far as as far as all this stuff goes. I mean, it, and it's also got to work in accordance to our bigger plan, which is honestly, this whole place is going to be an orchard come you know in time. But at the same time, we're also going to have to manage getting animals in and out of this terrain. Right. So there's all that stuff to consider, but hey, folks, it's it's kind of easy to do when you got your bra right here next to you. Did <laughs> I say it wrong? I said it wrong. Yeah, it's... I, I, you, I don't know. I, I'm trying to learn from you on that. We'll work it out. B R U H, bra. <laughs> well, I guess we're both okay. wrong. Okay. But this guy was saying bra. So it's creme brulee. <laughs> creme brulee. That's it. I think that's that what it was better. That's anyway. what it's supposed to be creme called. Brulee. Well, made by the Homestead Honey. Oh, creme brulee right. by the Homestead Honey. Boy, she's going to get a kick out of that. <laughs> she's going to say I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> oh, man, this sounds like we got so much, so many cool things to do around here. But I can't wait, y'all. Hey, honestly, folks, you need to go over here. I've been saying it from the first time we met him over here. When you guys figure out the full extent of what this good man's doing here over at Metcalf Mills, and you can see it right there, look. Click on it. You're going to be floored by what he does, not only with the mills, but this, I mean, this groundwork he does, the sorghum, which is, how close is that? Real close. Yeah, we're going to get to help him out. How, how cool is that, y'all? We're going to get to go help him out with some of that sorghum. sorghum. Um, folks, when you see the full extent of what this good man does, you are going to lose your mind. So go ahead and subscribe. Check him out over there. From my bro, from like, like right over there. You live right over there, right? Right over there, bro. Yep, right over there. <laughs> so, so hey, y'all. It's uh, it's always a joy when Justin's around, and uh, we have a good time all the time. So, um, is there any other place they can find you, Justin? Uh, that's about it. I've got an Instagram if you need to contact me or whatever there, but that's about it. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. There's Justin from Metcalf Mills, and this is Billy and William holding the camera. <laughs> Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.